One important part of sending astronauts to Mars is by providing food to keep them alive. For a temporary mission, how much food would we have to provide for our astronauts, and if we wanted to develop a colony, how well do vegetables grow on the red planet? And what research is taking place right now here on Earth to help solve some of these issues and pave the way to go to Mars? Let's talk about that. As we know, food is critical to keep any living organism alive. Plants require nitrogen and water from the soil and sunlight to allow them to grow. Animals feed off of plants and other animals. And our astronauts are going to eat just astronaut ice cream? That's not going to happen. So we have to provide them with all these sources of food to keep them alive. First, we are going to discuss how exactly we would supply food for a temporary mission or a mission that leaves Earth, goes to Mars, stays there for a little while, and then comes back, with the overall time frame being around three years. Now, this type of mission, all the food would mainly be brought in a form of cargo or supplies and not actually grown. And that is because the capsule itself is rather small. It's not enough to provide sustainable food for the astronauts to eat. And if we wanted to bring a greenhouse, the time frames aren't really long enough in order for the mass of the greenhouse to make up for the mass of just providing food. And lastly, scientists don't exactly know how these plants will react in a radiation intense environment, so it would be much safer to just provide their own form of supplies in terms of food. So now that we know why we're going to be supplying the food to these astronauts, we have to understand how much they're going to need. On the International Space Station, the average astronaut eats around 1.83 pounds of food per meal. Now a study a few years ago estimated that for four astronauts to go to and from Mars, they would need around 24,000 pounds of food. And that much food would probably require us to send another cargo mission to Mars to provide that food for them. Now this might seem pretty straightforward that we just supply the food for them, however there are some major psychological and nutritional challenges that come along with this. The first challenge is something called menu fatigue. Imagine for the next year that you could only eat the same breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Maybe it might be your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner, however after a few weeks you'd get pretty tired of it. This is what menu fatigue is. It is when you no longer are interested in what you're eating, and you're eating to survive rather than thrive. However, astronauts work long hour days, therefore we need them to be thriving, and if they have this menu fatigue, then this psychologically will bring them down. They might get the nutritional values, however their minds will be telling them that they're not as energetic. Now there has been a solution implemented on the International Space Station, and that is providing a very diverse menu of around 200 different food and beverages to choose from. Now for a trip to Mars, it's estimated that we'd have to maybe bump that up a little bit so that they don't get used to the same meals. However, it is something that we could solve. Now the bigger challenge is a nutritional one. It turns out if we send a cargo ship, it's going to have to leave two years before our astronauts do. And if it's sitting on Mars for two years, our astronauts get there for their three year mission, some of the food could eventually end up being around four to five years old before they eat it. And because of the high radiation environments in the interplanetary space and on Mars, it's thought that that would cause some chemical reactions that could degrade the nutritional values. It would also cause the food to lose some of its color, therefore you might be eating things that are a little gray, which could also play a psychological effect. Now there actually is a solution to this problem. It turns out scientists believe that if they introduced a hydroponic section into the capsule where they were able to grow fresh vegetables, that would bring their morale up and enjoy what they're eating a little bit more. Here's a quick video that was taken on the International Space Station that looked at how astronauts were eating lettuce grown in space. Now it's actually pretty interesting because the nutritional value of that lettuce turned out to be the same as lettuce grown here on Earth. The only difference is that since it was grown in space and they hadn't eaten fresh vegetables in a long time, it felt really rejuvenating to have that kind of food. Therefore, if we can provide that, it would not only boost their nutritional values, however, it would also give them a higher morale to keep eating the food that's provided. So now that we've discussed a temporary mission, let's talk about how we could actually provide for a colony on Mars, meaning that we'll have to find a way to grow our own food there. Now there are quite a few challenges when we talk about growing plants on Mars, and the first one is developing a greenhouse. The greenhouse would have to be pressurized and underground. 
Why pressurized? Well, when plants experience low pressures, they actually think that they're dehydrated. The atmosphere actually pulls the water from the leaves of the plant, which causes it to lose water overall. Therefore, if we kept it in a low pressure environment, it would actually require more water to live and eventually wouldn't even produce vegetables. It would probably just die. In addition, it needs to be underground because that would provide a little bit more radiation protection. As I mentioned before, scientists don't really know how exactly plants would be able to grow in this sort of environment. Therefore, we have to take a precaution and prepare for the worst in terms of they won't grow. So if we go underground, that would at least protect us from enough to get to a point where we'd be able to grow the plants. Now there are still more challenges to growing vegetables on Mars. Some scientists believe that the first few generations of these vegetables will probably have to be hydroponics or without soil. And that is because Martian regolith or soil is made up of heavy elements such as cadmium, copper, lead, iron, all of which are pretty harmful to vegetables that want to use that soil to grow. In addition, there's not a lot of nitrogen so we would have to provide our own fertilizer for it to grow. Now some scientists here on Earth have been able to recreate some sort of Martian regolith and been able to grow radishes, rye, peas, and tomatoes. Now there's an interesting thing that the scientists aren't considering in their experiments, and that is perchlorate molecules. The Martian topsoil has these molecules called perchlorate in them, which are actually toxic to plants and humans or anything that's made up of organic molecules. And it turns out there is a way to get rid of them. As I mentioned in a previous episode, we can use extremophiles to get rid of those perchlorates and turn them into oxygen. So if you want to learn more, check it out. Now with all this information, there are some people trying to recreate a greenhouse here on Earth by using the conditions that would exist on Mars. And this is called GreenHab which is at the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah. And what they're trying to do is show how difficult it would be for astronauts to sustain their own food source for a few months or a year. Now there is one last solution and it's rather obscure. NASA has actually put funding into a small business that is trying to figure out how to 3D print food. And this would probably mean that we would have to take raw elements from their form, put them together into organic molecules, and then slowly grow them into something that could be eaten. However, there's still a lot of research and development that needs to be done into this. So from my perspective, a temporary mission is pretty straightforward. It's not energy efficient in order to grow your own food, so just bringing whatever you need with you in the capsule and sending a cargo ship ahead of time is probably your best bet. However, if we're going to actually develop a colony on Mars, we need to really understand how radiation affects vegetable growth or plants. And that is because if it affects them a lot, then we'll have to look a lot more into radiation protection. And if it doesn't affect them as much, then our greenhouses can be much larger and require less energy since they'll be on the surface. So in the next episode, we're going to discuss communication. How will we talk to our astronauts and how are they going to talk back to us? How important is it going to be and what is some of the basic science behind how we talk in space? Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.